Now, your basic stream setup will usually have your game audio, your microphone audio, the music that you're listening to, and possibly even your Discord chat open with friends. Please comment down below and tell me what that's like. But with this trick, you can now specify exactly where your music is being played and have it removed all with one click. You'll be able to listen to the music that you want on your stream with your viewers, and then when you go back to watch your VODs later, you won't have any music at all. That means you're not gonna have to worry about any muted VODs that is insanely annoying for people when they're trying to go back and create content from their stream. Just note that this feature is only in the most recent versions of Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. Hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, make sure you click subscribe and come back for more. Twitch recently sent out an email to its creators with a more in-depth explanation of how DMCA claims are filed, how to protect your channel, and what Twitch is doing to help moving forward. Now, I think a lot of people missed the most mind-blowing part of this email, where Twitch stated that they had 1,000 individual claims from music publishers, and all of the claims were for VODs, which pretty much debunks all of the previous assumptions that a lot of content creators and streamers had when it came to how these bots scan each stream and file these claims. So you can listen to any song you want on your stream as long as you don't have to worry about it being on your VOD later. And with this method right now, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now this is for people that only have individual sources in their playback area on their sound settings for their computer, where if they have a headset or something that could separate themselves from their actual PC speakers, they might be able to split their game audio or their music and things of that nature. Now if you don't have an extra source that you can split your music up to and it only goes into your PC speakers and that's it, you can go to vbaudio.com and download an additional virtual audio cable. You can download one for free or get multiple ones for a donation of I believe as low as $5. And if you have something like this similar to what I have, you can split things up and then have it all separated in your audio mixer and control all the volume levels separately. The main problem people have with the virtual audio cable method is not knowing exactly where to route all of your programs into your newly downloaded virtual audio outputs. Just right click back on the speaker icon and select open sound settings. At the very bottom, select app volume and device preferences. On this screen, you can customize your outputs and have a setup similar to this one, separating game audio, chat, and my music that I'm listening to. Big problem though, why isn't my Spotify showing up on this screen. I'm not able to change the output. All you have to do is simply click play on any song in your Spotify app and it will suddenly pop up in your app volume and device preferences screen and you can change the output from there. A good backup strat to get your Discord working in this way is going directly into your Discord settings, going to voice and video and changing your output from there. A lot of people have global audio sources set up in their settings but the smartest thing to do would be making sure you disable all or most of these global audio sources. The key is making sure that you have your music being played in a separate audio track, which you can see in your volume mixer. The best way to do this is selecting a scene and then importing one of the sources as an audio output capture. Once you have them split up in your audio mixer, just click on one of the gears in your audio mixer and go to advanced audio properties. In this screen, you're gonna see a bunch of checkboxes next to all of the sources that you have right running audio at that time. Then for everything that you actually want on your Twitch VOD, you're going to want to put in another line of checkboxes. So for example, if you want everything in your actual live stream put down into column one, and then everything for your actual Twitch VOD put into say column two, make sure that for column two, you have all of the same boxes selected for your sources, excluding the one for your music. Then once all that's done, go into your actual OBS settings and under output, you will see under the streaming tab, Twitch VOD track. For this, you just select the checkbox to activate the Twitch VOD track, and then select whatever track that you set up. That way, every single thing that goes from your stream will be only put out onto that Twitch VOD track that you select. You're specifically telling Twitch what different sources you want output to your VOD itself, so that if you guys go back and test this yourselves, and watch your VODs or your past broadcasts, you're not gonna have any music whatsoever. Now, it can be a little creepy watching some of your clips back where there normally was music and then having no music uh, in certain cases. Yeah. 
Cool. One final thing I should probably mention to make it easier on yourself, I have all of my audio sources nested in their own separate scene. Just audio with no visuals whatsoever. It has my game audio, my Discord, and my music that I'm listening to all separated into its own scene. That way, I can now import that scene as its own source into any scene that I want. And this will make your life infinitely easier rather than having to go into individual scenes, adding everything individually and blah, blah, blah. It's a whole process. Set it up this way and I promise you, nesting all of your sources globally like this will save you a lot of time down the road. I hope this video helped. Click subscribe if you want to see more content like this one. And here's to no more muted VODs.